Well, hello, Bruce. I'm here with Bruce Mackay, the, the Joint Managing Director of Viaduct Capital Limited, to talk about Viaduct Capital and um, what's happening uh, both in your lending and also with your, your borrowing from, sure. from mums and dads. Firstly, can you explain who Viaduct Capital is and what type of lending you're doing? Well, Viaduct Capital is a, a small lender. We're focused on property and business lending, so we don't do consumer finance, for example. Um, we sort of tend to do what we call complex property transactions where we're looking to lend money to people, um, you know, a, a large part of our portfolio is property developers who have not not the big end of town, but certainly there's been a lot of people that have um, undertaken developments over the past couple of years. And at the moment, a lot of those developments are sort of locked. The uh, Their existing lenders won't lend them any more money, but they're still good transactions to do. So we, we come along, we lend them a little bit of money. We're often taking first mortgage positions. That allows them to complete their development. Often um, these borrowers have got pre-sales intact or they have underwrites. So as part of our process we go through all of that and assess the quality of the underwriter, the, the pre-sale, and make sure that if we lend the money we get it back. Can you give us some idea of the types of um, projects that you're lending to? Well, um, it's been really around the uh, residential, a couple of smaller residential subdivisions or, or where um, a developer has been building a house for example or a couple of houses. It hasn't been large scale stuff. We're talking about lending typically less than one and a half million. And what we're finding is that in that market, say half to one and a half million, there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, we, we're seeing a lot of stuff and we're also being very selective about what we uh, will lend to. And um, how does it work? Do you put in some of your own money and lend some money, or do you um, simply lend money and take a big fee? What is, what is it? What's the structure like? It's around um, assessing the value of the proposition and saying, well, if we put money into it, what, are the, what do we need to do to get the money back, or what does the borrower need to do? So it's all, all about getting the cash return. Um, then it comes down to an issue of pricing, so we are um, sort of looking to take a fee because we think um, that's an important part for us, is to you know, earn fees. There's a lot of work to be done in terms of even doing relatively modest loans. Uh, so um, it all comes back to the cash return. So for um, someone who's putting money into Viaduct mm -hmm. Capital, what makes you different from the likes of a Hanover Finance or a St Lawrence, who've also been in that property finance sector? Well, I think that the sector or uh, well, the, the whole financing sector has changed quite dramatically. So the type of lending we are doing today is the sort of lending that a bank would have done two to three years ago, all day long. Um, the type of lending that Hanover, Strategic, um, Dorchester, etc. were doing was large projects, lending money over sort of effectively extended time frames, maybe, maybe three to four years, and in a sense relying on sort of continued growth in property prices and demand for property to take them out at the end of, end of the project. We're typically looking at small and short term stuff where we have a very clear idea of how we're getting our money back before we put the first dollar on the table. We're lending um, to people that are sort of in the process of doing a transaction, so we're not looking to lend on things that are sort of speculative or new. Um, and we're looking at um, having a good diverse portfolio. So we've got pro we've lent money on projects here in Auckland, we've got projects in Wellington, we've lent on projects in the South Island, so we're not sort of just focused on the Auckland market, we're really looking for where the opportunities are on a nationwide basis. Uh, what's the situation with Viaduct Capital and the Government Guarantee right now? Well, we, uh, we lost the guarantee, as you know, back in April. Um, we have seriously considered reapplying, Treasury invited us to reapply, um, but when they announced the extension to the guarantee uh, and the new rules around that that apply from next year, we took the view that there really wasn't a lot of value to be had in, in going through the application process. Uh, it is a somewhat open-ended process, so you're never quite sure when, when it would finish. And um, effectively take the money that we would have paid to the Crown in terms of the guarantee cost and give that to investors. So what does that mean in terms of what you're offering in, terms, in, in, your, in your interest rate? Well, because we're sort of paying the guarantee fee to the investor rather than to the Crown, we are offering a higher interest rate. And admittedly, Viaduct Capital is a higher risk investment. So, um, you know, we're offering rates that are sort of sitting just below the 10% range, sort of between 95 to 10%. And um, what's your credit rating? Or are you going to get a credit rating? No, we don't have a credit rating at the moment, but we have applied. Um, we're going through a process 
with a rating agency at the moment, and hopefully we'll have something sort of completed um, sort of January, February next year. Because we're a small business, we don't have an obligation to have a credit rating, but we're still going through the process voluntarily. Because as I understood it, the Reserve Bank is going to regulate the non-bank deposit-taking mm. sector. You're saying you're too small to be part of that? Or? Well, with the credit rating, um, a deposit taker that has more than 20 million of deposits needs a credit rating, so we have less than that at the moment. So we're not under an obligation to have a credit rating, but we're still going through the process because it's a good process to go through, and it gives investors confidence. Because at the moment, um, you're actually looking for, in your prospectus, for up to $50 million Correct. in, in uh, new money. Mm. Um, would that mean at some stage you'd be forced to become part of the regime and get a credit rating? Possibly. If, if our deposits get to, get to a sufficient level, yes, we will have to be part of the regime. So, you know, putting ourselves through the process now means we're sort of covering ourselves off down the track anyway. Mm. Now, when Vita Capital was set up uh, last year mm. and... Uh, bought um, a smaller finance company, got their guarantee to start with. It was run by Nick Weavers. Can you yep. tell us what's happened to Nick and, and what's changed there? Sure. Well, Nick um, has moved on. He's, he resigned at the end of September and has left the business. Um, I, I think Nick took a view that he wanted to become more involved directly in property rather than um, be involved on the lending side of things. Um, if you recall, Nick was a CEO of a major listed property company for a number of years and I think um, you know, he decided to return to that more direct property role. And um, can you go into a bit more depth on why the Treasury decided to take away the guarantee from Viaduct? Um, I wish I could give you a definitive <laughs> answer because we don't actually have a definitive answer from Treasury and um, you know we tried to engage with them on a number of occasions and it was somewhat challenging to get them to engage with us. So I can't give you an explicit answer why they um, have given us some reasons which may relate to why we lost the guarantee, but we don't actually know. Mm. But, you know, it's what's done is done. We're, it's all about moving forward and uh, getting on with the business rather than sort of things that happened six months ago. Mm. Now, uh, what are you seeing out there in terms of uh, lending to uh, developers and others in terms of how stressed they are, um, are they able to sell their apartments or their townhouses or whatever they've built? What, what are you seeing? We're seeing actually quite a large number of transactions coming through through the door. Um, people, you know, in that one half to one and a half million dollar bracket, there are a lot of transactions available. You know, we're looking at them, we've, we've been very selective. Uh, I think it's more of a fact that, you know, other lenders just won't act or, or, or don't want to act. The banks have pulled back, other finance companies have said we're not going to lend to property development. And that's largely a reflection of the fact that they're looking over their shoulders at sort of some pretty big piles of, of stuff they've got to deal with. The advantage we have is we don't have that. You know, when we bought uh, what was priority finance, it had a small book, but it didn't really have any issues inside it. And that was really one of the attractions that we weren't buying somebody else's problems. Um, these other companies, you know, still have all these issues to deal with, so they're not really focused on looking for new opportunities, whereas we are. So, you know, we sort of sit in the box seat a little bit because we, we can take advantage of the opportunities and we can sort of really have our choice of what we're prepared to lend on and what we're not prepared to lend on. Uh, looking at the return you've got, 95 to 10% yep. or so, um, how does that compare, do you think, to the risk involved, uh, given that... Um, Property lending has been painful for some people in the past. You're unrated and you're unguaranteed. Sure. I think it's a fair reflection of the risk. If, if you look at um, deposits that are guaranteed, they're sitting sort of 2 to 2.5% two below what we're offering, typically. Um, now, although we are lending sort of on property, it is property in today's market, not property in yesterday's market or the market of two years ago. So... Um, and we think we have a you know quite conservative set of lending policies, so we're not rushing out there trying to take a big pile of risk. We want um, to get our money back. Absolutely, we're not sort of trying to lend it there and wait for something else to happen. We want to um, make sure we've got very sound transactions, and we're not lending for short for a long period of time. We're sort of trying to keep our the, sort of the average of our lending book shorter than the average of our funding book, our depositors. 
so that we make sure we, we have our money back before we have to give it back to the depositors. And you know, that's a pretty important plank of our business. So it's short term focused um, in, in trying to be as secure as we can. Great. Thank you very much, Bruce okay, McCullough.